But basically what we need to do is clean this block up, right? And then we can start putting it back together. Yep. All right, cool. One of the hardest things when you do an engine rebuild or engine swap or anything, or excuse me, just engines rebuilds, if you want to do it right, is cleaning everything. So a lot of people think like, well, you can pull an engine apart, you can put it back together. And if you really bust your tail to do it, you could probably do it in like five or six hours. But man, most of the time it takes you a full day of just cleaning everything, getting all the surfaces you know, pristine, getting all the ceiling surfaces, cleaning out all the bolt holes, mm -hmm. everything. Like every engine I ever do, I always dedicate at least an eight to 10 hour day just for cleaning parts. Man, I want this thing back together. I want to get the brakes working and I actually want to use this thing making some hay next spring once I've bought a second baler and gotten everything set up. Brake cleaning's awful, man. What do you mean? It's not doing much? No, I mean, look, like as soon as you, as soon as it dries. Yeah. See how it bleeds a chalky film? Yeah, it, uh, I've actually noticed that already. Uh, here, let's get the acetone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it pays to not clean your shop. <laughs> You know, you have a press. I'll let you line up the oh gears. Boy. Sometimes these ancillary gears like this one and then this one don't make a difference. Uh, sometimes they do. If it's marked, then time it. It's real easy when it's doing this. It's real hard to pull the whole engine back apart and then get mm -hmm. the timing right. And some of these, you can actually get them off and they'll like, I mean, they'll shatter the gears, but you can tell right here, this, uh, this gear goes to our air compressor on it. You got two dots here, two dots here. Those two dots line up in between that valley. Two dots there, two dots there. Those two dots, you know, the peak lines up in the valley there. And then right here, we have a single dot and you can't tell because I got a bike yeah. covering it. Dot there, dot there, and a dot in the valley. So that's it for timing this. Timing this. Do not get your cam gear and your crank gear out of time because most time it won't start and you'll have all kinds of power issues and don't think you're more clever than the engineers on this. I'm gonna give it five degrees more advanced timing like a race car, cause reasons. <laughs> One of the other things I would like to mention, even though I do not claim to be a mechanic, is that these little hex plugs that they put in these things to stop up the, um, the oil coming out the opposite side of this, you don't actually know how tight these are in here and it's the sort of thing where you really don't wanna take anything you know, for granted, you can't really assume anything because there's four of them on this engine. This one was actually in there pretty decently tight, presumably because this is the one that we chose to film. Uh, a couple of the ones on the other side, though, I mean, it was ba basically finger tight in here. And we don't want these things wiggling loose because then they're flying around in the engine. And also, of course, we would lose oil pressure. So all we're doing is taking them out, applying some Loctite and getting them going back in and then getting this going down in here at the bottom of the hole. Ugh, respectively tight. It's there, it shouldn't be going anywhere now. Got our guess. bearing shell in NAR. No, no, that's the improper serpentine style. You're an improper serpentine style. You did a pair of yeah, I kind of figured, but if we can keep it straight, we... Should, shouldn't we, Lucky? Lucky's stuck in here with us because he wants to go run around and bark at the neighbor dog, and he just doesn't understand why no one else wants to listen to that. Yeah. So, he, so he's looking worried because he wants to go outside. Get him, Lucky! Say wolf! Lucky, say roof! Roof! Good, Good boy! boy. <laughs> 22 millimeter sacket. Start in the center and we'll torque this one, this one, then we'll come over here to this one, then we'll come torque this one, then we'll come torque this one, then we'll come torque this one. When doing the main caps, you need to start in the middle. Tighten the main cap to, uh, you can do this in stages if you want to, I don't think it's necessary, but Tighten the middle one first, and then you just kind of crisscross to the outside to walk it down. Those are quite dirty. That's wow, scored. What, what is the, yeah, why is this scored? Is this from when we ran out of Earl? Yep. Wow, lovely. That's, that's absolutely terrible. Here, uh, will you hang on to this? Okay, so today on the Hydraulic Press <laughs> Chucky Channel, we're going to press out to the, uh, how do you say, 
pushing very in the rods. <laughs> Make sure you handle your rods very graspily. <laughs> Yes, it presses. Well, we got the pistons on, the uh, piston rings, got the rod bush uh, new rod bushings in, rods, the bearings in, and then uh, these are our little protectors so when we're hammering and hammering it at home, we don't accidentally nick the crank journal and then have to deal with it. What's going on, Mom? You gotta use the Yeah, okay, well, tell us what lathe you own. Not not the one you get paid to run that your boss owns. What what lathe do you own? Damn it! One job, Steven! <sighs> oh, man. Where did he even go? <laughs> oh, look, we still got the other one, man. It'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah, just fire it up. We'll find it sooner or later. Oh, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Oh no! <laughs> you see it now? Yeah, I see it. It's down in there. Oh, I bet you could not do that again twice. We should probably go to Harbor Freight and buy one. <laughs> Be a little better and cheaper. All right, guys. Oh wait. Go ahead. All right, you're gonna film me wearing this ridiculous chest rig. I am. All right. Okay. So. Problem is, we had to replace the old crankshaft because, uh, you know, enough of the rod going hur -dur 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 loose on the thing when the tractor ran out of oil last summer, you know, completely chowdered up the uh, thingamajigger. So the new crankshaft we got, this is the problem, it's seven thousandths larger on this part than the old one. So, went to... <laughs> The old local big box store got one of these things. I would put it on a die grinder, but it's only supposed to run at like 4,500 RPMs and this drill's like 3,000 or something. Close. Yeah, <laughs> no balls. So we're just gonna try and jam this down in here in probably a highly inappropriate way and um, and hope we can ream out 7,000 on this thing fairly easily. <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, worked too well. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> hey. Only three and a half thousandths per side, so it shouldn't take long. All right, so I don't normally Black Friday shop, but I did recently, and this is what I got. Genuine Mitotoyu digital things, only 30 bucks on eBay. I'm kidding, I bought it from a real machine supply. It's not the fake ones. Better not be the fake ones, but whatever the case. All right, uh, let's see. All right, that's as wide as it gets, right there where I zeroed it. That's what's great about these digital ones. You can just zero them on whatever number you're trying to get close to. Still need to remove 5,000. All that sanding only took off 2,000, according to this. This thing, before you guys ask, it is like two inches too big to fit on my lathe. <laughs> Dude, it feels like it's moving, it's moving. I can feel it. It is moving. Hey, after we get it going a while, can't we just suck it down with the bolts? Yeah. Okay. All right, undo it. All right, oh, wait, you got it. Hey, I think this is gonna work fine, dude. Pretty good. No much. Oh, that uh, injector line we took off. I, I gotta bleed it. <laughs> <laughs> 